if I may briefly introduce myself? Whiskers. Scott Whiskers. Since I think we'll spend quite a while together, and I already like you pretty well, I would like to apologise briefly. You surely expected an elaborate cutscene. Well, all that would cost trillions of bucks and my creator is honestly a pretty poor fellow. In fact, he thinks you should be happy that the game is even available in more than 256 colours. Furthermore, this game also has a certain educational mission. And it's meant to give my teenage audience an impression of how Grandpa experienced adventure games back in the early 90s, shortly after the invention of the second mouse button. And since historical authenticity is more important than gameplay, the game will now run in high resolution 320 by 240 pixels. Have fun! Nah, don't worry, just kidding. Of course I want you to use your 8K monitor to its full potential. So bygones be bygones and let's just get on with it. You probably know how to play an adventure game right, it's really quite simple. It's best to take a look at the controls first. You don't have to memorize the controls now, of course, unless you have a photographic memory. Then, I congratulate you. Unfortunately, I can only remember things for a maximum of five minutes. That's why it's good I can always look up the controls in set. Hmm, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. For example, say, if a phone suddenly starts ringing, move the mouse pointer over it, select the hand icon with the right mouse button, and use the phone. And if you're in a hurry, do a quick double click and I'll run like hell to fulfill your wish. <clears throat> I said when a phone suddenly starts ringing. <clears throat> the display says Mary. I better answer it. Scott? Good morning. Had a good night's sleep? Hey Mary. Sure. Just struggled to get out of bed. What's up? Isn't it my day off? Ah, uh, yes. I know. And I am sorry. But we're having a medium-sized crisis here at the shelter. A crisis? Have you locked yourself out of the computer again? I told you your new password. No, no. Scott is great. I noted. Is this about Grumpy Chucky? Is he still miffed because I fed his arch-rival first yesterday? Oh, Chucky is a sweetheart again. Has only cost me a brand new Valyrian mouse. My problem is that your colleague Jack has called in sick. Again! And I'm all alone here, and could use a hard-working helper like you. Flattery in the early morning? As much as I would like to help you, I have my day off today. I have nothing planned yet, but once I think of what I have in mind, it will certainly be great. Can you ask no one else? Scott? Mm, please? Your last name starts with a W, making you the last on my short list of helpers to ask. If not for me, then do it for Chucky. And who knows, maybe you'll get to play with his Delirian mouse someday. Hmm, you have convincing arguments. All right. Even though I know that probably a bloodbath and no intoxicating mouse awaits me in the cat room, I can't refuse you anything, as usual. Give me an hour or so, then I'll be there. Thank you very much. You are the best. An hour, you say? That still gives me time to buy some cat food at the pet store. See you soon. See you later. Oh, Mary. She is a sweetheart. But as the manager of the local animal shelter, she's always trying to do too much and save the world. But I can understand her. I've grown fond of the furballs in the shelter too. Except for Chucky. That stupid cat can be quite an a** sometimes and I'm pretty sure he's out to get me. Looks almost clean. The flush of my toilet. Use at your own risk. And by I wonder if the alligator thing at the other end of the pipe is just an urban legend. The soothing sound is like something important to be done.
the ticket's soaking wet. I can't show it to anyone. And in you go. Sizzle, sizzle. Yikes. But, as we all know, the end justifies the means. I wonder if I'd better re-upholster the bed. After two years, it's about time. The comforter cover should actually be bright white. Oh, my doorknob! That would be the handle to my apartment door. I honestly have no idea how it got there. It will probably forever remain a mystery how this thing got into my bed. I've probably been sleepwalking again. I should put the door handle back on the door. Fits like a glove. Cell phone collected? Check. Unpleasant smelling bus ticket on me? Check. Ready for an adventure? Check. Then off to the animal shelter to bury my leisure plans for this weekend in the litter box. Drat, I've left my phone on the bus. My beloved iCell 8 SE Pro. So this is it, after eight years together, just like that, without warning. I feel like an important part of myself has been ripped away. I feel almost naked. I feel very cold, deep sorrow endless suffering and also a little anticipation for the new iCell 12 Pro which I will buy with the insurance money but if I'm unlucky some nice passenger might have left the phone with the bus driver I can pick it up later I mean if I'm lucky of course if I'm lucky I better get right back to Mary I'm sure there's a lot to do Oh, Scott, how nice. There you are. You can't believe how happy I am that you didn't leave me hanging here today. No problem. I'm happy to help. Are you still busy creating profiles for our residents on our website? Yes. You wouldn't believe how much work it is. We had so many new arrivals lately. And after all, each of our two to eight-legged friends should be presented in the best light. And since Jack is absent today... The rest of the work is, unfortunately, left undone. Do you have any particular requests what I should do, or just the usual? It would already suffice if you could tidy up the hallway a bit and feed our cats. I will take care of everything else when I have finished writing the profiles. So first, swing the broom and then the predator feeding. You got it. I better get to work right away, too. Thank you very, very much. You are the best. I would not disagree with that. Good. You should always carry a bit of cat food in your pocket. Because you never know if you'll run into a lion or elephant in the rural regions here. Now get to work. As the great contemporary poet MC Hammer once sang, is Hammer Time.
Good work, Scott. One less death trap. Clean work. Slowly, I'm getting hungry too. Perfect. I think my work here is done. I better tell Mary the good news right away and get my well-deserved praise from her. Good. Less intelligent animals than the noble creatures in this room can probably use the rubber bone more. Syrian headache tablets, the strongest on the market. Do you mind if I borrow your rubber spider for a moment? No, you go ahead and take it. Jack must have placed it here. Every morning I get scared anew when I turn on the light. Jack does have a strange sense of humor. Well, I better free you from this monster. Always carry Syrian headache tablets with you. That's right, because Syrian is potent, well tolerated, and safe to use from the age of 14. Syrian, now new with raspberry flavor. Syrian, the delicious pleasure for the whole family. Enjoy! I have unfortunately already reached my limit today with eight tablets and am completely clear in the head. This looks like a cat missing flyer. I wonder who's missing? Just as I thought. A missing cat. And a very pretty one at that. Let's see. Maybe I can help you. I see. A Lord Fumbleclaw is wanted. From a family named Longbottom. Mm, that sucks. There's only a phone number, no address. I could also call directly if my cell phone wasn't doing its rounds in the bus without me as a fair dodger. But like this? Hmm. You, tell me, do you possibly know anything about this leaflet left on your table? The one from the missing high-class kitten? Exactly. Unfortunately, there's only a phone number, no address. Are you serious? You don't know the Longbottom family and their elite estate. Longbottom? Never heard of them. Do you have to know them? You don't read gossip magazines, do you? Lord and Lady Longbottom are a constant topic. He, 8th generation English landed gentry and renowned amateur archaeologist. She, 20 years younger and proven expert at the finer things in life with a strong tendency toward eccentricity. The trade press has been eagerly anticipating the failure of this illustrious connection for years. Sounds to me like this is just a symbiotic ploy to sell more gossip magazine subscriptions. No, this is all real. All authentic. Real stories from the lives of the rich and beautiful. Uh-huh. All very interesting. Just, how exactly does that help me now in the search for Mr. Fumbleclaw? Well, everyone knows the Longbottom family estate. Everyone but Scott. True, everyone but you. Say, do you still have your permanent ticket for the local bus line? Yeah, of course. Ever since I was a little boy, I've loved taking a relaxed bus ride through the area. Well, there you have it. The Longbottom Estate is one of the bus stops on Route 66. You can't miss it on the bus stop anyway. A golden dollar symbol marks the bus stop where you need to get off. Apparently, one of the employees of the local transportation company was playing a tasteless joke. Very well, then I'd better pay a timely visit to Lord Longbottom. 
There's only a phone number on the leaflet, but I prefer to discuss the important things face to face. And what could be more important and urgent than a missing cat? You are absolutely right. And you'll get to know the Longbottom family up close. How I envy you. And good luck finding Mr. Fumbleclaw. Please let me know when you have found him. Sure will. So then, a noble creature in distress. A family in deep despair. Sounds like a new case for Scott Whiskers. I'd better get going. I wonder if there's something to Mary's fascination with this illustrious family. Those who claim that small dogs can't be dangerous have never stood face to face with such a beast. Be gone, you little barker. Then I will prove to you why we humans are the superior species. Who's a good stupid boy? Who's a good stupid boy? <laughs> I feel pretty smart right now. All that was necessary is the triumph over a supposedly superior creature. An intercom system. Looks like it's seen better days. Hello, this is Scott Whiskers from the City Animal Shelter. It's about their missing cat, Mr. Fumbleclaw. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hmm. Hello? Does this thing work? Get to me! Oops. This was unexpected. This old technology is also no longer what it once was. I better take the evidence of the mishap. My law professor calls this plausible deniability. How good that I at least paid attention in this lecture. An elegant cast iron gate? I don't think it's locked. Greetings, sir. Is this gentleman the new pizza delivery man? Then may he please hand over the pizza to me now. I have this urgent request. I see. So you are looking for Lord Fumbleclaw the Third. That's right. Son of Lord Fumbleclaw the Second and Lady Plushair. I guess so. Grandson of Lord Fumbleclaw the First and Madame Goldhair the Second. I'd have to take a guess. Grandson of the Duke of Worcester and Lady Plushnose the Fifth. That's a really good question. And Lady Longbottom's high hopes for winning the city's Ricky's finest noble cat beauty pageant. May I ask what qualifications you bring to this demanding task? Lady Longbottom has the highest expectations of her servants. Servants? I'm not actually looking for work. I just want to help in the search of your missing cat. I see. So you are idealist, without interest in the lavish reward. That's remarkable. But what talents do you have in solving difficult puzzles? Lord Fumbleclaw has already disappeared for a week, and the time of the competition is getting closer. Puzzles? Well, dear Mr. Butler, let me tell you that I am an expert in solving difficult puzzles. For example, I'm one of the few who found the extremely hard-to-find can of gasoline in the classic Manic Mansion without a walkthrough or a call to the LucasArts hotline. Furthermore, I successfully managed to sell not two, no, a whole three leather jackets at the Castle Brunwall to the butler of the castle in 1938. Only a few can say that about themselves. Well, I honestly have no idea what the gentleman is talking about in particular. Also, you have held up amazingly well for a centenarian. 
But if you really could persuade a fellow colleague to youthful leather jacket fashion, you seem to be no stranger to difficult tasks. That indeed speaks for the gentleman. So, I think it would probably be in Lady Longbottom's interest to have an audience with you. The gentleman finds the lady in the living area of the mansion at the end of the foyer. Should it become necessary to speak to Lord Longbottom, you will find him upstairs in his study. But please, do not disturb him in his archaeological studies, unless it is an emergency. And last but not least, I would like to ask the gentleman not to disturb little lady Susie Longbottom with her homework. As far as I know, the child is working on a complex experiment for chemistry class. All right, then I'd better go and see Mrs. Longbottom right away and ask for the details of our cat's disappearance. Lady Longbottom, the mistress of the house is a lady. Please be careful to address her correctly at all times. If interested, I will be happy to send the gentleman a complete family tree to memorize in an email. All right, whatever it takes to find Mr. Fumbleclaw. Lord Fumbleclaw, the third. <sighs> I guess I shouldn't expect too much from a pizza delivery guy. Uh... Lady Longbottom, may I interrupt you for a moment? Damn! Who the hell are you? How did you get past Rumstone? And keep your voice down! I come from the local animal shelter. My name's Whiskers. Scott Whiskers. So what? I don't take animals from the animal shelter. They're all... dysfunctional. No, I'm here because of your cat, Mr Fumbleclaw. You're looking for him, aren't you? Lord Fumbleclaw? Yes. That's right. The ungrateful cat ran away. And just before the beauty contest, he would have won for sure. Well, I specialize in tracking down missing animals and would love to help. Can you possibly give me some details about his disappearance? I really don't have the nerve for that at the moment. I have just returned from the Sir Archibald Birmingham reception with the bitter realization that the cheap booze served as champagne was not good for my nerves. Or to put it in your language, my damn head is throbbing, and your shrill voice doesn't make it any better. If you want to talk to me about my ungrateful cat, please come back in a few hours. I need my rest now. All right, I'll get back to you later. I wish you a speedy recovery. Yes, yes. Maybe this can relieve your suffering a little. I have an opened pack of Pyserian headache tablets here. Syrian? Really? Hmm. The cheap things are not my usual brand, but I think it will do. Ah, oh, that felt good. I can finally think clearly again. Again, about Mr. Fumbleclaw? Lord Fumbleclaw, please. If you don't know the correct form of address for a cat of noble blood, we don't need to talk any further. Sorry, Lord Fumbleclaw, of course. It won't happen again. Good. So, what? You're from the local animal shelter? Correct, but rather on an unofficial mission. I found your leaflet in my boss's office and would like to help. I'm a big cat fan. Strictly speaking, even my best friend is a cat named Jim. And as soon as I have a bigger apartment, he'll move in with me. And until then, I visit him every day in the animal shelter and do my work there at the same time. All very interesting. But what exactly does your street cat have to do with my breeding champion? Well... I wouldn't know what to do if Jim suddenly disappeared. Surely you're devastated. I'd like to help with the search. Yes. Well, it is indeed a great drama. You can't even imagine it. The damn cat 
has been my great hope for winning the Ricky's finest cat beauty contest. And now, oh, I don't even like to think about it. The competition will probably be won by Lady Beaufort's lice-ridden and extremely ugly cat. And I hate this person from the bottom of my soul. So all you care about is winning the competition? Don't you miss Lord Fumbleclaw a little bit? Missing? Well, my dear, I have a category of 53 of the noblest cats in the whole country, each one more beautiful than the other. And that is all that counts. The beauty. So, to answer your question, yes, of course I miss the stupid animal. I miss admiring the cat on the winner's podium. I miss the admiration of my rivals, all without a chance, of course. And I miss the admiring press reports, which are full of praise for my victory. So, yes, I really miss all of that. I understand. Well, anyway, your motives are, of course, your business alone. For me, only the poor animal counts, and every lost cat is one cat too many. Get to the point. I have a couple questions for you. Let's hear it. Any idea where I should start looking? Well, Rumstone had the task of taking Lord Fumbleclaw to Ricky's pet salon a few days ago. You need to know that Ricky is a true artiste with scissors and hairdryer and can conjure up insanely impressive hairstyles, even from the most matted hair. And until the big day of the announcement of Lord Fumbleclaw's victory, it was urgent to get the cat in shape. And so Rumstone took the cat to Ricky's and also picked him up. No, he dropped him off at Ricky's in the early morning hours and was supposed to pick him up in the late afternoon, after the work was done. And I guess that didn't happen. Rumstone was there at the pickup time to collect my beautifully groomed animal, but only to receive the bad news from Ricky that Lord Fumbleclaw was nowhere to be found. Ricky only briefly left the salon for a smoke break, leaving the cat alone for five minutes. Whoa, that's bad. Bad? This is a disaster. And if I don't find my cat by the competition, I'm going to sue Ricky to the last hairpin. That much is for sure. So I guess I'd best start looking at Ricky's pet salon. Yes, of course. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Why do you think I'm telling you this story? That's fine. Then I'd best be on my way right away. There should be a bus stop for the local bus line very close. Going by bus? Oh, God, how ordinary. But I guess you have to get there somehow. I guess Rumstone couldn't just drop me off at Ricky's in the Bentley? Now don't be rude. Our Bentley is only for the family. And for friends. And important guests. And you do not belong to any of these groups. All right. Then I'll be on my way and I'll let you know if there's any news. Do that. Now, please leave. I urgently need my rest. Sneak up on me like that. Did I order a pizza? You're the new pizza boy, aren't you? Um, no. I'm Scott, the new boy from the local animal shelter. Animal shelter? Why animal shelter? I have not ordered a new hamster yet. You can't order hamsters from us. Why would you even want to? Does your little friend over there need a playmate? No, 
I'm working on a project, and that requires hamsters. You mean you have a homework assignment? Should you write an essay about how much you love your hamster? Nonsense. I'm planning the biggest monster movie ever, and before filming can begin, I need... well... a monster. So you see your hamster as a monster? Isn't he much too cuddly for that? Now you've finally understood my problem, our previous pizza boys were not that clever. I'm not a... Mr. Snuggles is way too fluffy for my movie. I need a real monster. Can't you just use a creepy Godzilla rubber doll for your movie? A doll? Godzilla? Don't really know much about horror movies, do you? The best movies of the genre work with real monsters, without fakes, without tricks. It's all about authenticity. The viewer notices immediately if there is a rubber Godzilla jumping out in front of the camera. But you mean you want a real monster for your movies? You do know there's no such thing as a real monster. Nonsense. I've seen enough movies. A real monster is just the right combination of a cute pet and the right chemistry. Just the other day, I saw the factual report of Dr. Victor Frankenstein. Even 200 years ago, there were brave scientists who crossed the boundaries of modern science. Yes, but Frankenstein's only a fictional character from a novel. He's not real. You really have no idea. I have seen at least five versions of this report. Do you really think that science has been wrong five times? And it was about the creation of a living human being. Total madness. All I have in mind is the transformation of a hamster into the star of my movie. Oh my. Well, that sounds cruel. Don't you feel a little sorry for your hamster? Why should I feel sorry for him? Mr. Snuggles will be the star of my movie. What greater honour could be bestowed upon a hamster? And probably he will also be the star of all sequels. There are at least ten sequels in every good horror movie. I don't even dare to ask, but what are you working on there with the chemistry apparatus? The transformation of Mr. Snuggles? And again, you're right. You really are the smartest pizza boy I know. Yes, I am tinkering with a recipe to turn Mr. Snuggles into the monster he is meant to be. But I have not yet found the right recipe. And before I test it on Mr. Snuggles, it must be correct 100%. Unfortunately, I only have one hamster for exactly one attempt. Oh dear. Child, wouldn't you rather go out into the fresh air and play a little, catch butterflies or pick flowers? No time for this kind of nonsense. I've set myself a deadline for my movie. I have to meet it. Now, I would be very grateful if you would stop disturbing me in my work. Maybe you can still find a pizza somewhere. I used to have a whole army of hamsters in my children's room. I'm afraid Susie's in desperate need of therapy. There's clearly still some chlorine trifluoride missing. Lord Longbottom, may I interrupt you for a moment? Hmm? I didn't order a pizza. I'm sure it's for my wife or Grumpster. Pizza? I don't deliver pizza. I want to help find Mr. Fumbleclaw. Lord Fumbleclaw? You're talking about my wife's cat. That walking bedside rug. Your wife? The cat. The animal has so much hair that I can't get closer than five metres without my allergy kicking in. Right. I found your leaflet with the missing pet ad at the local animal shelter and would like to help with the search. That is very commendable, but I'm afraid I cannot contribute much. I usually avoid my wife's hairy hobby. My allergy will kill me otherwise. Personally, I prefer far more intelligent creatures. I assume you're talking about chihuahuas. I could admire your paintings downstairs in the foyer. That's right. Personally, I have only two great passions. Archaeology and my little Rufus, a direct descendant of one of the noblest Chihuahua breeds in the entire country, and my best friend. Only one Chihuahua? Yes, of course. My wife has a whole army of hairy allergy donors, 
All I need is one true friend, and that's him, my Rufus. You should have met him at the front gate. He happily greets every guest. Sorry, I'm afraid not. Probably patrolling the other end of your impressive estate. Too bad. You would have liked him for sure. I'm sure of that. Is there anything else I can help you with? Are you sure you're not delivering a pizza? I'm starting to feel a little hungry. Do you need any help with your archaeology stuff? Help? You probably mean well, my boy. But your language suggests to me that you probably do not hold a PhD in archaeology. Or have some other form of qualification in North American history. Well, I've seen plenty of westerns. Does that count? Westerns? So, movies? Yeah, go ahead. Ask me anything about John Wayne. John Wayne? I don't think your movie knowledge would be useful to me in any way. The old John Wayne movies in particular shed light on the events of the time in a highly one-dimensional way. However, if you happen to get the phone number of a real expert, I would be happy if you send it to me. I have a few interesting topics that I would like to discuss with a colleague. But specialists in my field are unfortunately few and far between in this country. So my movie knowledge is no help to you? I'm afraid not. But please don't get me wrong, there are also real experts in movie and television. And, for example, the consultants of the classic Dances with Wolves were definitely luminaries in their field. But, as I said before, you're more likely to find such specialists overseas, and less in this country. Well, I'll keep my eyes and ears open. Maybe such an expert will cross my path. Thank you, and good luck, even if this is highly unlikely. So, your hobby horse is archaeology. That's right. And without flattering myself, I would call myself the expert on Native American history. So you're a real, live Indiana Jones? You mean that movie hero? Well, even if his adventures can be credited with the fact that the youth increasingly deals with my profession, they're still quite clearly more fiction than reality. So you haven't opened the Ark of Covenant yet? No, and unless it was buried by the Incas or Aztecs, I probably never will. Pity. What about the Temple of Doom? Have you discovered it yet? The Temple? Of what? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Ever met a crusader? I'm afraid I'm a thousand years too young for that. Possibly you've set foot in Atlantis? No, not yet this year. Or dug up a mysterious crystal skull somewhere? Behind me. There, on the shelf. Cool! May I ask why you're wearing this costume here in your estate? Well, my friend, quite simply, only in the outfit of my grandfather, also a luminary of archaeology, can I fully concentrate on my work. So it's more based on mentality? I suppose so. The exact connections are not quite clear to me, but as soon as I try to concentrate on my work in casual clothes, this is doomed to failure every time. My thoughts wander, and every work step costs me twice the time. Your work? What exactly does it consist of? Well, I specialize, as my father and great-grandfather did, fully in the study of Native American history, both in the South and in North America. More than a thousand years of history still holds many secrets, and especially the time before the discovery of America by the Vikings. I knew it! Still holds many secrets, and has hardly been explored to this day. But the period after Columbus landed in the Bahamas is also highly fascinating, and each of my trips to the distant continent rewards me with new, exciting insights. I know a pretty good movie about Columbus from 1992. And I must have watched Dances with Wolves a million times. Not to mention, of course, Pocahontas on Disney Channel. So, in a way, I'm your colleague in the field of knowledge, only rather with a focus on synastic archaeology. 
Your enthusiasm for movie and television is honorable, but I'll be honest, I don't think much of popcorn archaeology. Unless, of course, you've also completed a five-year degree at a prestigious university, followed by at least as long practical application of what has been learned. I think if I add up all the time I've spent in front of the TV, I'll get five years. I'm afraid we can't find a scientific consensus here. Is there anything else I can help you with? That's all for now. Thank <laughs> you.